Hello there, I'm Alana Tucky. I'm the lead faculty for Math 133. And I'm going to be creating a series of tutorials here to help guide you through project number one. In this particular video, we're going to go through task number one, parts one and two. We're going to download some data and we're going to organize it. Alright, so let's read up here. So you will use gapminder.org, which is an awesome website, to access data for the purpose of exploring descriptive statistics, i.e. graphs, tables, numerical values like mean, median, and mode, that kind of thing, and graphs with Excel. Um, the entire assignment is to be done in multiple worksheets in one workbook file and submitted in MyStatLab under Course Tools Document Sharing by the due date. That'll all make sense if you follow along in the tutorials. Um, you should never touch your calculator through the entire project. Everything is to be done with Excel. And that includes calculations, your tables, your graphs, all of that. If you do it someplace else, like with a calculator, then you will not be given credit. So what we've discovered is that a lot of departments in the college or employers expect you to have seen Excel at least at some point in your life and used some basic formulas. So this particular project will guide you through just the basics of how to make some graphs and do some very simple things with Excel. And these tutorials will guide you through step by step all the Excel stuff and then you'll have to kind of answer the analysis questions on your own. Of course, since you're working with a computer, you want to remember to save your file every step of the way. Save it in a place that you know where it is. If you're working on a school computer, you want to bring a jump drive and download it onto that drive, or save it on your OneDrive, or email it to yourself, or quite frankly, a combination thereof. Put it in your OneDrive, but also email it to yourself just to be safe. For both tasks, for task one and task two, you're going to use the year that was assigned to you by your instructor. So make sure that you go and look at the, whatever your instructor told you, make sure you write down that year because you're going to need it. All right, so let's begin with task one. We're going to do parts one and two. So we're going to go to the website, gapminder.org. We're going to click on data. In the search bar, we're going to type GDP slash capita, and we're going to locate and um, on the, locate and click, excuse me, on the Excel download for GDP per capita U.S. inflation adjusted, and we're going to save that file. All right, so that's a lot to do. So let me open up a new tab. I'm going to call it gapminder.org and press enter. And there we go. Now Gapminder is, of course, a live active website. It's actually a really popular and important website for governments and charity organizations. Um, it's a great um, storing house for data, and it's using tools that have, quite frankly, been revolutionary within the last decade for how people think about data. Now we are interested in the data tab over here. That's where we can download data that Gapminder owns or knows because it's all publicly available data from government agencies or the United Nations or the World Bank, that kind of thing. So we click on data over here and it brings up all the data sets. There's tons and tons of them there. So we want to go over here and we want to type GDP slash capita. So GDP is gross domestic product, roughly a measure of how much stuff your country creates in a year. And then capita means um, head it's in Latin. So it's how much money per person your country makes. And there are different options here. Now this might change depending on what semester you're going to go do this project. So pay attention to what the instructions are. So it, my particular year it says to use um, GDP slash capita U.S. inflation adjusted. So that's the one I'm going to grab over here. I'm going to click on this icon over here on the right. Now if it says in a later semester to use one of the other ones, then use one of the other ones. Use whichever one you're informed to use by the project instructions. So I'm going to click over here. I click on that little Excel icon. There's a little green X on it. That's Excel. And then I'm going to open it. And there we have it. That is the GDP data as told by the World Bank. I know that because if you click on the About tab, you can see that the source organization for the information was the World Bank. And then there's some footnotes, although there's nothing in the footnotes tab. There's a settings tab, which doesn't have anything in it. What we're interested in particularly is this data tab and this about tab. Now, my computer program um, doesn't open it right away. It has a protected view, just in case there's viruses and such. So I'm going to click Enable Editing. So that way it gives me the full version. And now I want to save this file. So I'm going to go to File, Save As. And I'm going to save it in my project folder. 
and I'm going to save it with the name um, Project One Fall 17 Video Tucky. You want to make sure that you have Project One, and the semester is not a bad idea, like Fall 17, and your name, your last name somewhere. So make sure you put that in. You don't need the video part. I'm doing that because I'm making a video. But you want to have your name and then your the, pro, the fact that it's Project One. So don't put your instructor's name. They know who they are. They need to know who you are. So put your name in the file name. I'm going to click Save. And there we have it. So now this is my spreadsheet. I own the spreadsheet. I downloaded it from the website. It's mine to play with. So I'm going to play with it over here by changing this data tab. So you can see there are different tabs of the same workbook. The overall screen that you're looking at is called a workbook. So I'm going to double click on data and I'm going to type GDP. That's what it says to do in task two. So let me go back to the project real quick. Right here, rename the data tab GDP. Okay, so I just did that. So I did that by double clicking, oops, not there. Sorry, double clicking down here and I just typed GDP, click off of it, and there it is. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the about tab. So I'm going to click on the about tab, double click on the word about, and I'm going to type about GDP. So about GDP. That's because you're going to eventually get more spreadsheets in here, more sheets in this larger document. And don't forget, you can save any time. So you can click on the little save icon, or you can hit Control S, but you can keep saving it every step of the way, so that way you don't lose any of your work. All right, now let me go back to the instructions. It says, delete all the columns for the years other than the one you were assigned, and then sort the data in ascending order, from lowest to highest. All right. Now you're going to be given a random year by your instructor, so you're going to want to get rid of anything but that year. So let's suppose I was given 1970 just for fun. Then I would highlight all the columns from 1960 up through 1970, and I'm doing that by, I let my mouse, my cursor, hover above the column so it's near the letter B or the letter C. And I hold down my left mouse button and I drag it over to the right. When I get the 1969 highlighted, then I lift up on the mouse button. And now I've highlighted columns B through K. The columns are all listed alphabetically. The rows are all numerical, right? So then you right click and delete. So you right click on the area you just highlighted and select delete. Or there's another way to do it, probably in the edit menu, but that's just what I do. I right click and delete. So now it shifted everything over. 1960 through 1969 is gone. And then now I would highlight 1971 to the end, keep going, and then I'd right click and delete all of that. That's how I would make 1970 my year. You don't really want 1970, you want whatever year was assigned. So I'm going to use the year 1960. So I'm going to highlight the rest of the years, and I'm going to delete them. Oops, I missed one. There we go. So I highlighted all the columns except 1960. I right-click, and I delete, and they're gone. Now I want to do a couple things here I, in order to assort this, but I also want to kind of clean this up a little bit. So I'm going to do a few things. First of all, I'm going to highlight columns B and A again. So I did that by holding down my mouse near the B and dragging over to the left to A. Now everything's highlighted. And I'm going to go up here and I'm going to change my font size to like 14 so you can see what everything looks like. And you can see that things are getting kind of mushed in here. You can't read those country names, but I'm going to fix that. So I'm going to move it so that my cursor turns into a double-sided arrow between A and B. And I double-click and it will automatically resize my columns so that they're wide enough to accommodate the values below. And then I want to do the same thing with the rows. So I'm going to let my mouse kind of hover between the rows. Any two rows will do. It doesn't really matter where you go. So I'll go between 6 and 7. I let my, my mouse hover and it turns into a double-sided arrow. I double-click. Oops, actually I have to do it for all of them. So let me highlight the whole thing. And I do that by clicking on the top left corner over here. To the left of the A, there's a little downward arrow. That highlights everything. And I let my mouse, my mouse hover in between, double click, and all the rows will get resized the way I want them to. So now I can actually read all my countries. 
Well, this looks great. Everything's perfectly sized. Now, I see I have a lot of empty countries, but don't worry about that. Excel knows enough to ignore empty values, so don't stress. Now, I want to do one other thing. I want to highlight and make this all bold up here. So I'm going to highlight these two, and I'm going to click Bold, and that makes it both bold. And I'm going to center it. By, I did that by clicking on this little icon here that makes it all in the center. And now I'm going to click on a, the paint bucket and make it green. You can make it any color you like. What I'm trying to do is make sure that we all know that that is a title. This is 1960. It's a title. It's not a GDP. It's the year. I mean, if you want, you could actually type year 1960 if you want, just to make it super clear. All right. Now I want to sort this data in ascending order. It's already sorted in alphabetical order, but that's not really that useful to me. Half of these countries, actually more than half, don't even have any data because the World Bank didn't have data for those countries for whatever reason in, the, in that year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight both columns A and B. And I'm going to click on Data up here in the Data tab. And then you want to click on Sort. Not the A to Z, not the Z to A, but the actual Sort menu. So I'm going to click on that, and it brings up a menu. The important thing to note is that this box over here has to be selected. There should be a little check mark in there. So it's telling you that your data has headers, which you do. Year 1960 and income per person, blah, blah, blah. Those are headers. They're titles. You don't want to get them sorted along with everything else. So make sure that that little box is selected. And then I'm going to go here to click sort by. And I'm going to pull on this little arrow. And I'm going to tell it which column I want it to sort by. Well, I want it to sort by the year 1960. So I'm going to click on year 1960. And then I want it to go smallest to largest. That's ascending order, so that's perfect. So I click OK. And there we go. All the data got automatically organized from the lowest value I have, which was Malawi, to the highest value I have, which was Bermuda. And then all the empty ones just kind of hang around down here. There's a whole bunch of them. That's OK. Um, 1960 apparently was not a good year for data collection. So there are 179 empty values. Some of those countries, of course, just didn't exist back then. Some of them um, have merged. Some of them have never collected data. There's all sorts of reasons why there would not be data for that country. But you don't have to worry about it because Excel knows enough not to care. All right, I'm going to save again, clicking on the little save icon, because I'm paranoid and I don't want to lose all my work. And now I'm going to go back and check where we're at. So we have done task one, part one. We downloaded the GDP data, we named our file, and we have renamed our data tab and our about tab. We deleted all the columns with it except for the year we were assigned, and we sorted in ascending order. So we're done with parts one and two. I'll see you back here for part three.